Welcome to Tide Cats today for a Friday, August 13th, 2021. Friday the 13th, the only Friday the 13th in 2021. And if you want to win a bet with your buddy tonight, uh, the next Friday the 13th, May 13th, 2022. So there you go. Uh, if you want to sound smart or sound like a know-it-all, uh, there you go. The next Friday the 13th is May 13th, 2022. Uh, lots to get to on today's show. Ticats getting set to kick off in Regina, Saskatchewan. A 10 p.m. kickoff against the Rough Riders. At 9 p.m., you can join Tiger Cats pregame with me and Andy Fan 2s, that presented by Active Green and Ross. And then we'll hand it off to Bubba O'Neill and Mike Morielli. Uh, they're sitting in the booth for RJ and Luke this week, and uh, they actually launched a brand new podcast today on the Ticats Audio Network entitled Ticats This Week. Uh, they're setting up to tomorrow's game, so make sure to check that out wherever you're checking up this podcast. Coming up on today's show, we're going to break down the depth chart in just a few moments as that's been released by the team. Uh, so we'll highlight some uh, big returns to the lineup. And uh, speaking of which, uh, we'll hear from Ted Laurent. So not to give away the depth chart too much, but we'll hear from Ted Laurent. Uh, we're also going to focus a little bit on the special teams uh, we're going to hear from punter Joel Whitford and special teams coordinator Jeff Reinbold. So we got a great show for you. Ticats getting set. Uh, 0-1. How about that game last night, by the way? Whew, I did not see that one coming. The uh, BC Lions. Uh, I saw one, one headline that said they shocked the football world. Um, I don't know if shocked was the right word, but uh, definitely a big win for BC and Calgary 0-2 to start their season. I don't think very many people saw that coming uh, when they saw the Argos and the BC Lions on their schedule at home to start the season. So a lot's going on across the league. Speaking of which, next week the Ticats are on a bye week and I'm looking forward to kind of seeing what other matchups are out there while the Ticats enjoy their first bye week of the season after Saturday's game. All right, let's dive into this depth chart because a couple of highlights to it. And let's start on defense because Ted Laurent back in the lineup, huge. 97 was a full participant for the Ticats all week at practice on the injury report. So that's great to see uh, him lined up. Uh, but Dylan Wynn is out. So that's tough to see. He's on the one-game injured list. Lorenzo Malden, the fourth, he's also on the one-game injured list. So uh, left to right, the Tie Cats uh, go uh, Jagarit Davis, uh, Autry, the second, Eddie Wilson, the second, and Julian Hauser on uh, the defensive end spot. Uh, Ted Laurent, I did not leave him out. He's listed uh, behind Autry, the second, on the depth chart at nose tackle. So Ted Laurent is on the lineup. He was a full participant, hoping to see him. Uh, the rest of the defense lines up basically exactly the same as we saw them in Winnipeg last week. Simone Lawrence, Santos Knox, Cameron Kelly up the middle, and then from left to right in the secondary, Jamal Roll, Stribling, Daly, Evans, and Frankie Williams. So Cariel Brooks remains out. Tunde Adelike remains out as well. Uh, they're both still on the one-game injured list. All right, let's shift our focus to the Offense, and let's start with the offensive line because if the return of Ted Laurent is big, uh, the return of Chris Van Zyl is huge. Uh, yes, the most outstanding lineman, offensive lineman from 2019 is back in the lineup, recovered from a thumb injury. He will start at right tackle. At left tackle, Okafor is back in the game. Brandon Revenberg at left guard. Darius Sirocco at center. And we got John Yarbrough at right guard, lining up ahead of Jesse Gibbon. So there you go. That is the offensive line. A couple of changes. Chris Van Zylback is huge. Uh, a couple of changes in the receivers as well as in at slot back. We have Pappy White. And in at slot back, we have Tim White. So a couple of additions. Out are Jalen Marshall. He is on the practice roster. And also out is Marcus Tucker. He's on the one-game injured list. So... Pappy White in, Tim White in. They're both at slot back. Jalen Acklin's at his spot uh, wide at uh, on the left. And then uh, uh, Ungerward, David Ungerward the third. Tyler Ternowski lining up behind him. And, of course, you got Speedy B lined up at slot as well. And then no changes up the middle. Jeremiah Masoli starting. Sean Thomas Erlington started. Nikola Kalinich out there as well. And then kicking, special teams, everything's the same there. 
Tyler Bertolette, Joe Whitford, and Gordon White, and of course, Frankie Williams returning kick. So that's the depth chart. You can go to tiecats.ca for a full in-depth one and uh, check to see who's on the injured list and whatnot. But uh, huge, huge return for the Ticats, of course, is Teddy Laurent. And we had a chance to catch up with Ted earlier this week about his return to the football field. Yeah, if if it felt good to be back out there, my brothers. You know, I, you know, I felt good being out there, man. It's, it's been a long time. Finally got to be out there practicing with my brothers. So, you know, what more can I say, man? I'm, I'm glad to be back. I mean, absolutely. We got that mentality the next man up. So, and uh, every guy I've been preparing like they, uh, they go on a play. So, uh, you know, it's been fun working with the young guys. You know, they they, 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 they practice pretty well. They learn real quickly. So, I'm just looking forward to, to be out there with those, those boys. I mean, I mean, I did vi- like you know. Once I got the the go ahead, I, I mean, you know, I, I did visualize like plays that uh, I I would make like certain uh, plays pos- position that they put me in and uh, visualize making plays. So you know, say that. But as far as like like butterflies or like how me feel uh, when 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 game times uh, come, I, I can't really tell you that to like you know I hate the feel. <laughs> got a really good quarterback. Uh, we know they're gonna be uh, there at home. You know, when they play at home, then, you know, the crowd's going to be really into it. But uh, they're going to be really up-tempo. They're going to try to come out fast. And uh, we're just we, – we're ready for whatever they throw, they throw at us. But we know they're going to come out fast. Uh, I don't think um, that bothers us. I don't think we we, uh, we let that, you know, dis- distract us. But we know, like, what kind of crowd is up there, especially we told uh, the young guys that, you know, you thought Winnipeg was, was, was loud. Dude, wait till we get there. But we, that's, that's not going to distract us. We, be, we, we, uh, we've been practicing with, with crowd noise, and uh, we, uh, we'll be ready to play. That is Ted Laurent as he spoke after practice today, and he mentioned the crowd. And second week in a row, Ty Cats are kind of dealing with a hostile crowd. Last week in Winnipeg, they see the banner. Uh, there were thirty-three thousand three hundred and fifty fans at the opener at Mosaic Stadium last week against the BC Lions. Not sure they'll hit that number, but it will be a a, a raucous crowd as it always is at Mosaic Stadium. And it reminded me of a clip I uh, heard from our brand new podcast, Ticats, this week with Bubba O'Neill and Mike Morielli today. And, uh, you know, Mike had mentioned how that's kind of the ultimate X factor in this game. Here's what he had to say. It is a, a great environment to play in. It's exciting. It makes you feel like, okay, this is, this is big time, um, even as a, a visiting team. But blocking out that noise is not always uh, easy to do. Uh, it is a beautiful stadium built for noise, built to uh, you know, accommodate 33,000 that make it feel like 60,000. And um, you know, the Saskatchewan fans are diehard, and they are loud, and they are now coming off of you know, a, a kind of a sellout in, in, in week one and, and doing it again back to back. And Hamilton, to their kind of defense or, or to their credit, came, you know, from a hostile environment in Winnipeg. That's another market where you're going you're gonna to hear the crowd and they're going to be on top of you and it's going to be disruptive. So th- there's no doubt that the team is well aware of that. Um, they have to work on, you know, a private snap count or quiet snap count and all this stuff. Uh, to be able to be ready to play. And, and, and sometimes it works out to your advantage that you use the crowd and you're able to silence them early. And I think that is the key. Once a crowd gets into the game, if they're allowed to stay in the game by the home team, then it, it becomes a daunting task. That's Mike Morielli. That was on Ticats this week with Mike Morielli and Bubba O'Neill. You can catch that podcast wherever you're catching this one. Uh, the whole thing, uh, it's a great chat setting up tomorrow's game. But yeah, that, that crowd is going to be nuts. And if the Ticats can keep them out of it early, uh, you know that's obviously going to be huge for their success. Another aspect uh, that we've been talking about this week uh, at practice has been the prairie winds, the summer prairie winds. And we had a couple windy days at Tim Hortons Field uh, this week for, for practice, and uh, it made for some interesting kicks. And uh, to get further into that discussion, I want to hear from uh, the special teams coordinator, Jeff Reinbold. And uh, before we got to his kicker, especially Joel Whitford, I had to ask him about the penalties that his uh, special teams units took uh, last week in Winnipeg. First of all, you know, penalty avoidance in this organization is one of the things we talk about all the time. And you can talk about it and talk about it and talk about it and talk about it. But until, particularly with a young bunch of guys like we've got, until they actually see for themselves what it costs your football team, because the penalties that I'm just talking about the special teams penalties here, 
This, the penalties we took on special teams gave Winnipeg over 80 yards of field position in a very close game. And so you, you can't afford to do that with good football teams. And, so, you, you know, again, we always treat everything the same way here. We have a policy of we attack problems and not people. And we define a problem as anything that keeps us from playing at the highest level. And certainly penalties are those are, are, are things that keep you from playing at the highest level. So it was addressed in no uncertain terms. And, you know, it's, it's a growth thing. We're going to have to learn as young players. You know, you just you can play hard, but you got to play under control. Well, I told the, the guys before we went on the field and in the special teams meeting this morning, this is a perfect opportunity for us to practice what it'll be like, you know, in Mosaic Stadium, because we'll be going to Prairies in August. And you know what that means in terms of the wind. You know, we already saw last week what it meant for John Ryan when he was punting the ball with the wind at his back shoots, he can knock it a mile. And, you know, so it's, it, it is one of those things that you've got to adjust and you got to factor in as you, as you start to lay your plan for the next week. You know, when he first came to camp, he had never seen a Canadian football league field, right? He'd never seen a Canadian football league game. And when you walk out on that field, especially as a specialist, the kicker or punter, and you see the width of that thing, it changes everything in terms of your approach, the lines that you take to get the ball into the corner. And so I thought for his first night, with the exception of two balls, that he hit the ball really well. You know, you're talking about one of the premier returners in the league. And, you know, he put the ball in the corner where we needed to have it to cover it. And, you know, hopefully that'll be the beginning of expanding on his on his repertoire of kicks, because like a lot of those Aussie kids, they have a tremendous repertoire of kicks. And we're just yet finding out what he can do. That is Ticat special teams coordinator Jeff Reinbold talking about the wind in Saskatchewan. And, of course, his new kicker, global draft pick Joel Whitford. And Joel Whitford played his first career pro football game and had a decent night considering it was his first night, considering he was a very busy man. He punted the ball nine times for 380 yards, averaging 42.2 yards per punt. So Joel Whitford, uh, of course, brand new to the CFL, brand new to pro football, and we had a chance to catch up with him earlier this week. Super challenging for sure, and I think the way that we need to look at it is that, you know, yesterday and today we're really just figuring out how to, how to manage it and how to take advantage of it um, and, and not so much, you know, um, stressing over the result, but this is the week to prepare. You know, we're expecting similar conditions and uh, – that's sort of the nature of the of the kicking game in the CFL. A lot of the fields are open, so you got to sort of accept it and, and roll the punches. I'm, I'm still I'm, I'm learning something every day. I'm learning a new rule of the game every day, a new way that we can sort of um, take advantage in certain scenarios. Um, but yeah, I'd say, like that was definitely something I focused all camp on. I think I struggled early in camp and um, really just just tried to hone in that skill. Um, very unique just having that wide field so it's good to get a couple of good ones off in the, in the first game and hope i can keep that up that is joel whitford the tie cats punter again tomorrow night and not a bad debut we had nine punts of course for 42 yards just over 42 yards averaging uh in his first pro game and now he gets to go to mosaic stadium and kick in the prairie winds and line up against John Ryan, one of the best to ever do it in the CFL, and of course a Super Bowl champion as well. Uh, one of my matchups to watch uh, for sure in this one. Uh, of course, I will have my full analysis on this game tomorrow night at 9 p.m. It's Tiger Cats pregame presented by Active Green and Ross. You can join me and Andy Fantuz for that on TyCats.ca, TyCats All Access, and at 900 CHML. And at 10 o'clock, we'll hand it off to Bubba O'Neill and Mike Morielli, who are sitting in for RJ Broadhead and Luke Tasker. And if you want a double dose of Bubba and Mike, they launched a new podcast today, Tie Cats This Week. So check it out wherever you're checking this out. Uh, if you're going to the Arkells concert tonight, uh, rock your Tie Cats gear loud and proud. We'd love to see that. Uh, I'll be there as well. And if you see me, come say hi. I would love to chat Tie Cats with you. Uh, it's going to be a great show. It's going to be a great game tomorrow night. Hope you have a great Friday. Uh, we're back tomorrow, 9 p.m. for Tiger Cats pregame. For the Ticats Audio Network, I'm Louie B. Hoping you have a great day.